How's it going everybody? My name is B and welcome back to your altcoins. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the crypto news. Welcome back to What the FUD as we take a look at all the news circulating in the crypto sphere for today. Before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. Market cap of $545 billion, which is down from $555 than it was yesterday. Ripple is down 21% in the past seven days. Stellar still going strong, up 21% in the past week. EOS also up. VeChain up 28% and Populous also up 27%. Steam still going good, 30% in the past seven days. So we're going to start with a really, really big piece of news that dropped earlier this morning when everyone was still asleep over here on the east coast of North America. CoinCheck Exchange freezes all withdrawals as up to $723 million leave his wallet. So there is a widely publicized hack that has been confirmed. Actually, update as of 3 in the afternoon UTC, CoinCheck has reported the likely inappropriate transfer of $532 million worth of NEM to the Financial Services Authority and the police, according to Nikki. Here's an update a little bit further back, an hour before that, NEM Foundation President Lon Wong has appeared to confirm CoinCheck was hacked, calling the stolen funds the biggest theft in the history of the world. Japanese cryptocurrency exchange Coindesk has suspended all withdrawals as a Ripple payment worth 1.23 million left its wallet Friday, January 26th. In what appears to be a problem tied to its support altcoin NEM, CoinCheck, which is among Japan's largest exchanges, suddenly froze NEM deposits Friday. And I quote, depositing NEM on CoinCheck is currently being restricted. Deposits made to your account will not be reflected in your balance. And we advise all users to refrain from making deposits until restriction has been lifted. Now, there are unconfirmed reports to Cointelegraph. Additionally, alleged 600 million of NEM was left in exchange. Let's see if we can find some more information on this topic. When it comes to something this serious, it's always a good idea to get multiple opinions from multiple sources. Now we're on Bloomberg Technology. This was updated about eh, an hour ago. No, half an hour ago. CoinCheck says it lost crypto coins valued at about 400 million. One of Japan's biggest cryptocurrency exchanges said that about 400 million in NEM were lost after coins were sent illicitly outside the venue. We are looking into the facts surrounding CoinCheck, Japan's financial services agency said in a statement. So here we are at Coindesk. This article came out just under an hour ago. CoinCheck confirms crypto hack loss larger than MTGOX. Tokyo-based cryptocurrency exchange CoinCheck has confirmed that it has suffered what appears to be the biggest hack in history of the technology. In a recent press conference, the exchange's president and chief operating officer confirmed that 500 million NEM tokens, at the time worth around 58 billion yen, approximately $533 million, were taken from the CoinCheck's digital wallets on Friday. Tweets from the conference indicate the exact total may not be fully known until further checks have been carried out. CoinCheck is looking into compensating its customers, so that's a very good piece of news. So looking at three different websites, it seems that this hack is true. That's insane. Here's a good piece of news. Coinbase's GDAX links up with trading software provider. GDAX, the cryptocurrency exchange run by startup Coinbase, has partnered with trading software provider Trading Technologies. The integration allows those who use TT's platform to access spot Bitcoin trading alongside futures for the cryptocurrency. Customers will have access to market data, charts, and automated trading tools with which to submit orders and trade cryptocurrencies on GDAX. It will also enable spread trades in which two assets are bought and sold concurrently. That's very, very powerful. Moving right along, European Central Bank expects crypto regulation focus at G20 in March. The European Central Bank says it expects cryptocurrency regulation to be high on the agenda at the G20 summit in Buenos Aires this March. The international community is preparing an answer to that. And I would expect, for instance, the G20 discussion in Buenos Aires in March to focus very much on these issues. British Prime Minister Theresa May and the U.S. Treasury Secretary expressed the need to consolidate standpoints, while former U.S. Secretary of State told Cointelegraph the technology had value and that people were thus going to talk about it. Elsewhere in Europe, Sweden's Deputy Central Bank Governor has stopped short of calling for heightened control of cryptocurrencies, saying at the WEF they don't meet the criteria to be called money. And this is very true. I personally wouldn't call them cryptocurrencies. I would love to call them crypto stocks. They can be called an asset, fine, but they are not a very good version of money because it's not a very stable store of value where they fluctuate a lot. This is very true. And it's not a very efficient medium of exchange because you don't buy your groceries with Bitcoin. I guess that's very true. 
Moving right along, Russia's Ministry of Finance legalizes cryptocurrency trading. Central Bank disagrees. The Ministry of Finance of the Russian Federation has presented the Digital Assets Regulation Bill, which defines and establishes a regulatory system for cryptocurrencies, ICO, mining, and trading. Notably, the, cent <coughs> Notably, the Central Bank of Russia disagrees with the Ministry of Finance that cryptocurrency exchange should be legally accepted. According to TASS, the authors of the bill are confident that the legal status of cryptocurrency would reduce the risk of fraud and provide fiscal transparency, which is expected to increase tax revenue of the government. Of course, they want to legalize cryptocurrency. They want to tax it. The bill defines cryptocurrencies and tokens as digital financial assets, which are not legal tender in Russia. So again, cryptocurrency is not necessarily being currency, but being assets. This is the second time we're hearing this. Concerning ICOs, tokens are allowed to be issued by legal entities or private operators for the purpose of fundraising. ICOs must be accompanied with legal documentation that discloses the details of the contract, such as the issuer's full name, physical location, official website, and the token's price. According to this document, non-licensed investors will not be allowed to invest more than 50,000 rubles, equivalent to about 900 bucks, into a particular ICO. So Russia is working on a bill to pass through their government to legalize and kind of restrict, but just mostly legalize, cryptocurrency trading. And another little piece of weird news, Brisbane's airport to launch in-terminal cryptocurrency payments. That's kind of strange. Australia's Brisbane airport has announced it will roll out cryptocurrency payments within the terminal shopping areas. The new payment system provided by the cryptocurrency travel firm Travel by Bit will enable travelers to use Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, and other digital currencies to shop and dine at various stores and restaurants across both of Brisbane's air terminals. Huh. According to the Travel by Bit CEO, the payment system presents a genuine use case for cryptocurrencies in the field of tourism. So this article goes on to talk about using cryptocurrencies as a way of paying for things while you travel to avoid bank fees, which is super powerful. That is everything in the news for today. Even though there weren't too many individual articles, there was that one massive one about the hack. What do you guys think about the hack? How is this going to affect the cryptocurrency market moving forward? Personally, it's a big deal. This is the biggest hack since 2014 when a bunch of Bitcoin was hacked. This is massive, massive news. And Japan is not a tiny market. It's a really big market. What is this going to do to the cryptocurrency market over here in North America? That is the million dollar question. So keep a close eye on the market, guys. Comment down below and let me know what you think about the hack and how you think it's going to affect the cryptocurrency market over here in North America. And as always, thank you very much for watching.